Welcome back to the second video. In this video, we are going to cover chapter zero. It has two sections. The first section actually is covered in the lecture notes. We can just read it. And I covered it actually in the first two videos of M1106 last semester. So just a review about the supremum and the infimum. And uh, some properties of the real line. So here I'm going to uh, just do a quick review uh, on what we will need in set theory and functions. Okay, so it's very important because basically, so we will need uh, some basic uh, identities in set theory. Okay, so first, if you have a set X, Calligraphic P of X or 2 to the power X usually denotes the set of all subsets of X. It's called the power set of X. Now, why do we use this notation 2 to the X? Because if X is, if has N elements, then the power set of X has 2 to the power N elements, as you know. So Now, in order to make things more clear, we shall use small letters to denote the elements of a set, like A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and we will use capital letters to denote sets, capital A, capital B, and so on, and calligraphic letters to denote collections of sets. Okay, so there's a kind of hierarchy. Now, this is not, uh, strictly speaking, uh, necessary, but it uh, may help us distinguish between sets and elements and sets of sets. Okay. Now, if you have a set X and the subset A of X, the characteristic function of the set A is the function which is equal to 1 on A and 0 outside A. It's also denoted by 1 sub A, so chi of A or 1 sub A. The complement of a subset A of X is the set of X that are not in A. So we have several notations for uh, the complement, we can use this symbol CA, CA in X to precise that you are taking the complement in X. X without A, backslash A, X minus A, and A to the C. So you can use any notation you like, you are familiar with, it's not important. Okay, so all these are the same. Now, uh, union of a collection of sets or family of sets, so we have an indexed collection here by index set A, the union is the set of elements that belong to at least one of these sets. The intersection, of course, is the set of X that belong to all the sets in the collection. And we have the very important De Morgan's law. The complement of the union is the intersection of the complements, and vice versa. The complement of the intersection is the union of the complements. You can write it in any notation you like. And we have the distributiv distributivity laws. Uh, A intersected with the union is the union of the intersections. And similarly for the union. So A union and intersection is the intersection of the unions. Okay, so these are set theoretic identities that are very useful in topology. Now, if you have a map, now uh, let me tell you that map, function, mapping, application, transformation, for in practice, they mean this mainly the same thing, okay? So maybe you uh, distinguish between the concept of a function and that of an application by saying that the function has a domain and a map has is defined everywhere. Now, uh, okay, don't make a big deal out of it because in practice, we will always specify the domain of the function, okay? So it's, it must be clear from the context. So map, function, mapping, application, transformation, same thing, okay? Now, the direct image under a map of a, sub, of a set, subset A of X is, by definition, the set of F of X, where X, uh, yeah, the, I should be, yeah, I should write it, it's A, not X, sorry. For that. So it's the set of F of X, where X runs in, is in A. It's the direct image. Now, the inverse image, please don't confuse between direct image and inverse image. It's very, very important. Some students confuse these two concepts, okay? 
it's very important when we, we will talk about continuity and measurability next year. So direct image is something totally different than inverse image. Inverse image, if we have a subset B in the, in the target space, so this is called the source space, the source set, the target set. So if B is a subset of the target set, then it's inverse image under F, denoted by F minus one of B. It's the set of X whose image is in B. Okay. So uh, the so the direct image lives. So the direct image of a subset in the source space lives in the target space, whereas the inverse image lives in the source space. Okay. So and these two can be distinct. Okay. Now, if f is a bijection, then f minus 1 is a function. But in general, f minus 1 is a map from this power set of y into the power set of b, because it takes subsets, even if f is not a bijection. So f minus 1 is not a function from y to x, unless, y is, uh, unless it is bijective. But in general, it's a function. So note the difference. f is a function from x to y. But f minus 1, in general, is a, is a function from the power set of y into the power set of x. OK, and now we need we will need some very elementary properties of inverse images. So the inverse image of the empty set is the empty set. The inverse image of the whole target set is the source set. Uh, we can interchange f minus 1 with complements. So the inverse image of the complement is the complement of the inverse image, in words if you like. f minus 1, the inverse image of a union, is the union of the inverse images. Same thing for intersections. And this, is, this may be confusing, actually. The direct image of the inverse image is contained in the set. So f of f minus 1 of b is contained in b. And equality holds if f is surjective. So we may have strict inequality here. Actually. Don't always have equality. And a set is contained in the inverse image of the direct image. You can, can draw a picture if you like. Okay. And you can prove all these. Just just a useful exercise, actually. If you if you if you if it's the first time you see these identities, try to prove them. How do you prove that? We take an element here and you prove that it's here. So take an element, call it y. So by definition, y equal to f of x, where x is in f minus 1 of b. But by, by definition of f minus 1 of b, if x is here, then f of x is in b. But f of x equal y, so y is in b. OK, so almost trivial. Okay. And you can do the same thing here. You take an element here and you prove that here it's here. And uh, we have you can prove equality if you have an additional assumption on f. OK, now uh, the direct image does not satisfy all these properties. It satisfies actually. So uh, yeah, so the direct image of the empty set is the empty set, of course. The direct image of x is not necessarily equal to y unless it's surjective. So property one, so this is not always satisfied. Yeah, so property one is not satisfied by the direct image. Property two is not satisfied by the direct image. Property three, it is. So the direct image of the union is equal to the union of the direct images. And the direct image of the intersection is only contained in the intersection of the direct image. And equality holds if f is injective. So this is these are fundamental identities in set theory that you may probably, you probably encountered in first year. And if you don't believe me, you can prove them. You take an element here and prove that it's here. OK, and you can give a counterexample. You can give a, an element here which is not here. OK, so these are fundamental uh, uh, things that we will need later in the course. OK, so this concludes the short video about preliminary. It's very important. And I will start with chapter one in the next video. So thank you for your attention.